8, 1993, and it's approximately 2 p.m. Paul Benassi is uh, going to talk to me on tape for the next several hours, I presume. Paul, would you step in here and take your place? Paul, uh, you're doing this on a voluntary basis. Yeah. Okay. And um, no threats or promises were made to you? No. To get to, to have you talk and to discuss this matter with me? No. Before we begin, tell me when you were born. August 3rd, 1967. Your number? 509. And explain to me what multiple personality is. Because uh, you've been a multiple in yourself. Yeah, a multiple personality disorder is a disorder that uh, people get when they've suffered traumatic events, usually when they were young children, usually stemming from sexual abuse or satanic ritual abuse. And uh, it's when a person has two or more uh, personalities living within a body and stuff, or usually it's more than that. And it's, they each have their own lives, and they each... Uh, sometimes they see each other as being... Usually they see each other as being a, a totally different person. But I... Uh, some of them know that there are multiple, or that there's other personalities within the same body, but the majority of the personalities do not, and the main personality usually has no awareness of... Uh, the other personalities at all. Usually he's totally unaware of everything. He just has to look through life with everybody saying, why did you do this yesterday? And you don't even remember yesterday. How, how do you switch from one personality mm -hmm. to another? Now, you were multiple personality, right? Yeah. How many personalities did you have? Oh, altogether there were about 120, uh, 121 or so. Did each personality have a name? Every personality has a name. Some, uh, personalities didn't have names, but they weren't personalities that were very active. Some of them held just a very few minutes of time all together, and it was just to hold a certain event or a certain traumatic episode in life. And why, does, why do people develop these? You said because of traumatic experience, but why would a traumatic experience cause you to develop another personality? I haven't figured that out myself, but I think it has something to do with the the fact that the main personality is unable to cope with it, it's so traumatic that they have to create a system so that the main personality can go on living without having all the problems because normal people who get abused and stuff that don't create multiples and stuff usually have a lot of emotional problems, have a lot of uh, physical problems and stuff, whereas a multiple usually, the main personality can usually go through life pretty simply and nobody really notices it until uh, the person starts getting older or switching behavior so evident that there is not just one person there that it's like you're dealing with several different people because they just change. Does a person who's multiple remain multiple all their lives? No. The multiple can become integrated. Uh, a lot of multiples, I think, go for co-consciousness, co -consciousness, which is more like living with the other personalities, but everybody aware of what's going on all the time. But integration means that the personalities are totally gone, that they, you don't switch off from one personality to another personality, that one personality, usually the, you know, hopefully it's the main person, all the other personalities integrate with them, and all their memories from all the other personalities go into that one person's memory, and the person learns to live with all of the traumatic events, and uh, learns to live in life and stuff without having to switch off to deal with daily events. Are you multiple personality today? Well, they say that I'd be a multiple in my life and have the ability to be a multiple and stuff, but I have no other personality, so no, I'm not. Who says that you will be a multiple in your life? Well, that's what all the psychiatrists try and say, is that once you're a multiple personality, you, you can uh, integrate completely and stuff, but you always have the ability to dissociate into an, and create a new, new personality in your time that's needed, which uh, I don't know if that's true or not, because there's nothing that, after remembering my past, that anything in the future that could be any more, any more horrible or any worse than what I've already gone through, so I don't feel like there's any need to ever have to switch back into that kind of a mode. Uh, are you saying that you're integrated now? 
Yeah. How did you become integrated? Uh, that's mainly through the work with uh, Pastor John and dealing with going through each of the personalities, finding out what caused the personality, and completely going through the personality, talking to it. In my own, usually it was in my room and stuff, and convincing his personality and stuff that he can live better if he's living with the rest of us. And uh, in, in the integration process and stuff, the personality, usually I can see it inside my head, because inside you have a visual of everybody, it's the other personalities and stuff. And they grow up, and they kind of just merge with you. And all of their memories come with them and stuff. There's no longer any need to have that personality because you already know everything that the personality knows from you talking with them. So when, when we talk in, in the next couple of days, um, um, as you remember things that happened in the past, is this going to be your integrated personality? How do I know that you're not going to go back into one of your other personalities and forget something? Because there's no other personalities to come out or talk to. There's no, no other personalities you can, you know, like I can step into. And uh, if I forget something, it's mainly because uh, I just don't remember it at the time or something. Sometimes somebody will say something and I'll remember it later. Because after integrating with other personalities, I have all the information they have. Whereas before, the personalities could just come out and tell you like that. Now I have to think about like a normal person, which is a little bit longer, but I still have a little bit better than other people because I know how to, I file all the memory and stuff. And I can just kind of switch into that type of a, this is like a file in my head and stuff, I can just kind of switch back and stuff and try and go into that activity or that event and pick out what it is that I'm looking for. Now, you said that uh, Reverend Morrow worked with you on your different personalities. Did you go one by one and identify each personality and then discuss that personality with him in order to become integrated? Mm, some of the personalities, the ones that were more what I call the uh, living altars, which is the ones I call them living altars because they were the ones that were living daily lives. I mean, they would like get up in the morning, one would, you know, go to school or whatever it was. They're the ones that ran the day. And most of my life I was out between like 2 and 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That was my normal time for me as Paul to be out. And uh, so it's like they were, you know, we had to go through each one of them and talk. To him. a lot of times they came out and talked to him, even though I don't think Pastor John knew a lot of times he talked to some of the other personalities. Sometimes I know he did. But yeah, I had to go through each one of them and discuss what created him in the first place. And the uh, main thing was is I had to let them know that I cared about them and that uh, I didn't hold any anger you know, toward them or anything for anything that they had done. And uh, a lot of them thought that, that I'd be angry with them when they found out everything that was going on and stuff. And so I had to deal with that. And the uh, main thing was is I think the ability that I wanted to be integrated because I didn't want to go on living a life when I didn't even know what was going on. It's like everything kept switching on me. It's like people would tell me something to do one day and a week later I was ready to go do it and they were like, well, who told you to do that last week? And I was like, you know, I don't remember. You know, it's like that was just this morning, wasn't it? No, it was last week. It's like, okay, you know. I thought they were going crazy or something when actually with me that was not really crazy but just switching because it's not psychotic, I'm not, I wasn't psychotic, I didn't, you know, it's not like I went out and did things that, you know, like an abnormal person would do. So, um, uh, you feel that uh, now as an integrated person, you have full knowledge of all that occurred with all your personalities and you can act as one individual, yeah. Paul Benassi, yeah. and without any difficulty. So as I ask you questions in the next several days, and we're going to be together for several days, and as you answer these questions, this is Paul Benassi.